Welcome to Goshen Prepping. Thanks for joining us. When it comes to disasters, natural disaster, man-made disaster, World War III, it doesn't matter. In all those situations, you want to look at certain foods you want to get from the grocery stores before it all disappears. And when it comes to food disappearing from the grocery stores, there's seven different foods that you're going to look at that are going to be gone first gone first. So make sure you do what you can to start, try to stockpile these before that time comes, because you know, once that type of thing happens, then those stores become bloodbaths and everybody fights over these. Number one, water. First off, I recommend that not only you stockpile water, have at least, at the very least, one gallon per person per day, have a month or two supply, you know, put some concentrated bleach in there. I'll put a link, by the way, for a video after this for how much bleach to put in to keep that water nice and clean. But it goes beyond that. And I'll tell you, up here in the middle of nowhere, Michigan, we lose power sometimes for a couple weeks at a time. And uh, one gallon a day is bare minimum. I recommend possibly getting those 55 gallon drums. You can get them from Amazon. I'll put a link below for those if you want to pick one up or at least look at them, see how much they are. Um, but do something, even actually have alternate means, possibly rainwater catchment if your state allows it. Maybe there's a creek or a stream or a lake nearby and having a very good water filter, like I always recommend the Katadyne, but something like that and activate a charcoal filter so that way you don't actually get bacteria and such or parasites to make you sick. But obviously you want to have water. And I've noticed that water sells out very quickly in stores when crap hits the fan. Number two, milk. And milk goes fast. Have you noticed that? And it's already bad enough where it doesn't seem to be milk lasts as long as it used to. And maybe that's why it goes fast now. But something to keep in mind as far as having milk. And obviously, if you have like an amazing place where you have your own cows or goats and you like goat milk, that's great. But finding powdered milk or some type of condensed milk, if you truly have to have the milk, is something you should be looking for, especially if you have like a baby and you need to be able to provide some milk for that baby. And maybe, obviously, you're not breastfeeding, obviously. In my opinion, that's the number one thing you should be doing anyway, but that, that's not always reality for some people. So having powdered milk would be something that'd be very advantageous to stock up ahead of time because when crap hits the fan, the milk disappears very quickly. Number three, bread. And same thing, having fresh bread, the bread aisles, boom, it's like a ghost town. It goes very quickly. If you have to have bread, I would recommend you get wheat berries and then find a way, not find a way, practice at a time, grind up the wheat berries. We have a wonder mill in our house, plus we have a manual one in case we ever need to do it manually speaking, and we make our own bread. It's a lot easier than you think. And we buy all our wheat berries, by the way, from Azure Standard. I talk about this company all the time. It's you're going to save a ton on shipping for these wheat berries because if you buy your wheat berries from another company, like for example, through Amazon or Walmart, you have to pay extra for the shipping in those 50 pound bags, 25 pound bags, whatever you get are very expensive, not through Azure standard. They actually have drops, setups around uh, the country, drop places where you can go and just pick it up and the shipping is very minimal. But if you want to continue having bread, I personally don't eat bread, I couldn't care, but if you do eat bread, Try to find alternate means and practice ahead of time to make your own bread. Number four, eggs. Oh boy, we experienced this one last year, didn't we? Eggs disappearing even the beginning of this year too. Massive egg shortages. And I don't think it's over yet. We're seeing a lull. We're seeing whew, some breathing room now as far as the eggs go. But I could easily see this happening again. I mean, let's face it. Our government and elites want to make it so we can't have chickens and eggs and all real meat stuff anyway. Obviously, if your zoning allows it, get some hens for your backyard. That is the first thing you should do if you're allowed to have that. We have lots of chickens. We've gone through chickens before. We've had lots of egg layers and lots of meat birds. And right now we have a lot of egg layers and we're getting plenty of eggs every single day, even for our big family. But if you don't have that situation, then getting some kind of uh, powdered eggs is, is very good. You can actually buy eggs from the grocery store now that are cheap. And you can crack them, put them into um, freezer bags and freeze them. I mean, you can't do a whole lot with them as far as like making some fried eggs, but like scrambled eggs still works very well. But eggs, in my opinion, as, as a doctor, it's the perfect food. It really has everything you need. You can live on eggs the rest of your entire existence and be a happy person. I mean, you may get bored with them, but health-wise, they're perfect. But obviously, in that situation, we're looking at right now, our modern times make it. So eggs, it's not something they want us to have, which is kind of scary. Number five, meat. And wow, the price of meat has gone up too, hasn't it? It's ridiculous. Uh, I mean, inflation always happens anyway. But I always recommend you do what you can. If you especially can, if you can especially have like your own animals on your own property, or if, like for me also, I like to hunt. That's a great way to get meat. But you need to find a way to preserve it as well. You know, if crap hits the fan, and there's no refrigeration, and you're able to kill a deer, are you going to be able to process all that meat and make it so it doesn't spoil? 
That's a very valid question, even for a chicken. We like to butcher our chickens on our own property as well. But having a freezer is advantageous, and we do ours with a solar generator into our freezer in case crap hits the fan. But think about this. Preserving stuff, especially if you actually use glass canning jars, is a great way to preserve meats. Um, I like to do it that way too. I like to use our freeze dryer as well. But if you're not growing your own meat in your own backyard, if you don't, don't do your own hunting, simply just buying cans of meat actually works very well. And that takes us into number six, canned foods. Canned foods actually disappear very quickly off the grocery store shelves. You seem to be able to always find something, be it canned meat or canned beans perhaps, or some kind of canned vegetables. There's always some laying around. But I always recommend if you're stockpiling food, go with the canned foods. They last, practically speaking, indefinitely. As long as the can's intact, as long as there's no problems with it. And right now, we're actually seeing a lull as far as the prices skyrocketing. Some of the prices have actually come down, come down a little bit. But this is not the time to say, oh, you know what? Everything's fine. No, crap is going to hit the fan again. There, it always works this way. Things get bad, prices go up, uh, then we relax. And then in that relaxing part, everybody goes out to play. No, you should be stockpiling. Try to put away whatever you can. Because canned foods will, uh, as far as the stock goes, will, we will see shortages again in the future. How soon? I would say probably this fall, but definitely by next year. And number seven, baby formula. And I put this on there because obviously some women, as I mentioned, can't breastfeed. You have to have baby formula. Baby formula shortages has been a huge thing over the last couple of years. And so if you are pregnant, you have a baby or plan to have a baby, I would recommend having some formula set aside. Again, if you can breastfeed, do it. But the baby formula, even if you are not able to use it yourself, getting it to someone who possibly can, can easily save the life of an infant. And as crap hits the fan, as we've seen over the last couple of years, the baby formula, sure enough, has been flying off the shelf. So there's seven things, by the way, that you should be looking for stockpiling now because when crap hits the fan, these seven things disappear. What would you add to the list? Because I'm sure there's other stuff too. Please put it in the comments below and let's talk about this. Thanks for watching.